Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things Bolt action. In today's video, we are going to be talking about everyone's favourite kind of unit. It is, of course, the tank. Specifically, this is going to be a beginner's guide. It will be aimed at new people getting into bolt action who might not be sure which tank they should be picking up. I mean, one of the best bits about bot action is the huge variety of armoured vehicles that you can get. Sometimes individual factions will have dozens upon dozens of choices, but that also can be a little confusing because how do you pick which one? Well, what I'm going to do today is take you through each faction. and I'm going to tell you which tank I recommend for that faction and give you a few reasons for why I think it's a good beginner tank. It's important to remember that we might not be necessarily looking at the best tanks for each army, but ones that are going to be very beginner friendly and going to help those people understand the tanks of their faction. So with all of that said, let's mount up, roll out and drive right into today's episode. So the first thing that I want to mention is when I'm recommending these tanks, I'm going to be taking into account a few factors, a few considerations. Firstly, I'm going to be thinking about how easy it is for a new player to learn that vehicle. We don't want anything that's over-specialized, over-complicated and has lots of special rules. We want something that people can just learn. We don't want them to be forgetting about if their tank's got one man turret or any other kind of crazy stuff like that. Something they could just play and just get familiar with very quickly. In a similar sort of vein, we're also going to be taking into account the real world availability of getting this unit. There will be some vehicles that are very powerful, but they might be made to order from Warlord, or Warlord might not even sell one themselves. And in that case, it's very difficult to recommend it as a beginner tank if they can't just go into the local game store and they're likely to find it on the shelves, or they can't just go online and buy it from an easy source. We're going to make sure that these are vehicles that people will be able to get their hands on. And finally, we want the tank to feel right. We want it to feel like it's iconic, like it's something that belongs in a quintessential classic army of that faction. Again, these three all kind of merge into one with not being overly specialized and being easily available. But we want to go for those tanks that when people see them and when we recommend them, they're not scratching the head and going, oh, I've never heard of that before. They're going, oh, yeah, of course, I know that tank. And it's great to know that it's actually at least usable in the game as well. But with all of that covered off, now let's get into the tanks themselves. The bit that everyone's really here for. And I think it's only right that we start with the allies. But not only the allies, of course, the armies of Great Britain. Now, the British get access to a lot of different tanks. They were fighting from the beginning of the war. They had lots of weird and wacky early designs, and they had some pretty cool late war designs as well. They've also got all of the stuff they can get from the Americans via Lend-Lease. But if I was to pick out just one of the metal boxes that the British like to field, I would probably recommend as my first pick the Cromwell. Now the Cromwell is as down the middle of the road as you can get. It is a medium tank with a medium anti-tank gun and two medium machine guns. It's medium all round. And this is a great place to start as a beginner because it means it's not too cheap, it's not too expensive, it's gonna take up a decent amount on your list where you're gonna respect that it's a viable unit, but if you lose it early on, it's not gonna completely cripple you and take you out of the game. It's also gonna be able to deal with a variety of targets. It is a jack of all trades, master of none. The advantage of the Cromwell as well is it also gets a little bit of help in the anti-infantry department with its main gun, having that sweet, sweet HE shell. There's a second tank that I would also give an honourable mention to for the Brits, and that is the Churchill. Now, the reason that I'm mentioning the Churchill is that it does come in the starter set for the British and Canadian Army, and that is one of the go-to starter sets for a lot of uh, beginning players. The reason why 
The church is good. It is a heavy tank and it's not too expensive. But it is also a heavy tank and therefore it's a little bit more specialized. It is going to take a bit more getting used to. And it's also going to directly impact quite heavily the kind of game that you play. I, I know a lot of people don't like heavy tanks in action, but I always say the moment someone turns up with one, the dynamic of the game can change because they truly do require proper anti-tank to deal with. So the church will get an honorable mention because it's very readily available. But if you're looking for just one tank that I would recommend as a beginner one, one that's good for learning the game, getting a feel for the Brits and is also going to be effective on the battlefield, I would recommend that Cromwell. But moving on now to our transatlantic cousins across the pond, it is of course the United States of America. And this is a fairly obvious recommendation, but I will say that the best beginner tank for them is the Sherman. There is a good argument to be made for something like the Stuart. Stuarts are considered to actually be quite competitive, especially the variant that's got a million machine guns strapped to it. But from a beginner perspective, it has to be the Sherman. It is a medium tank, medium anti-tank gun, medium machine gun. It's very similar to the Cromwell. It does have some distinguishing features. There is a Sherman for every occasion. You can have a, I was going to say early war. It's early war for the Americans. It's mid-war for everyone else. You've got the mid-war variant, which when they first started rolling off the production lines, you had the thin size and easy catches fired. They're a little bit annoying to deal with if you're a newer player, but you do have the later variations where they are essentially just medium tank, medium machine gun, medium AT gun, all the way. They have that fantastic HE shell as well, which lets them be good for dealing with uh, infantry with the main gun. It's just overall, a lot of the stuff that I said about the Cromwell applies to the Sherman from its rules perspective. But let's just zoom out a little bit here for a second. The great thing about the Sherman is there are so many different variations. So not only is it good for beginners where you just go for that middle of the road option, it's also really good for veterans. Maybe after your first few games, you decide you want to do some more theater specific stuff. And you're like, okay, well, I want an early war Sherman, stuff that was taking place in like Operation Torch in the Western Desert. Okay, well, we'll go for the variants that have got lots of problems, the thin size, the catches pass that I mentioned before. Or you can also end up using a Sherman for lots of other different variants as well. It depends on how strict your gaming group is when it comes to proxies and whatnot. But at the end of the day, a Sherman is a Sherman in terms of dimensions and sizes. You're not going to be modeling for advantage or anything like that. So you could use a Sherman as the variant with the 105 howitzer. Sure, technically it's not got the right barrel in the turret, but it doesn't matter if you're playing with friends. A Sherman is a Sherman. Or you could use maybe before you want to buy one of those more specialist variants, instead of like buying something like the Calliope or buying something like the Easy 8 you could be like, okay, well, you could say to your friend, can I proxy my Sherman as one of those? And if I like it, then I can buy it because it's the same dimensions. I'm basically just using a slightly different rule for it. So that's the great thing about the Sherman tank. It's not only good for beginners, but it allows you to experiment with all the different variants before maybe you go and buy those more specialist models. And it's also just able to be used in a huge variety of armies. That's something I, I didn't mention. I sort of touched on it with lend -Lease, with the British before, but let's not forget that technically I could just say the Sherman is the best beginner allies tank. Because you can use it for the Brits, you can use it for the Americans, and you can use it for the Soviets as well. Because the Soviets got an absolute crap load of lend -Lease stuff from America. And you can have Soviet Shermans running all over the place. So it's a really good vehicle if you're thinking of adding a medium tank to almost any of your allied forces. But speaking of the Soviets, of course, next up we have our final major allied faction, and that is the Red Army. Now, this is another fairly obvious recommendation, the T-34. But specifically, I'm going to mention the T-34-85 as my recommended go-to option if you are a beginner Soviet player. If you're not aware of this, there's essentially two variants of two common variants of the T-34. You've got the 76, which is the earlier variant, and you've got the 85, which is the later variant. Now, the 76 is a fine vehicle. It's very similar to 
Sherman and the Cromwell in that it's medium all round. And that might be fine for the Western Allies. But when you get over to the Eastern Front, I don't know what it is about these games, but I always find when you have Soviet players and German players going up against each other, the German player feels obligated to bring a really big tank. It's always a panther or a tiger. It's always something big and horrible and gnarly and really difficult to deal with. You tend to find when you've got the Western uh, Allies facing off against Germans that it's Panzer 3s, Panzer 4s, maybe even lighter vehicles than that. But whenever you come over to the Eastern Front, it's big tank time all the way. And unfortunately, a medium AT gun on a T-34-76, that's just not going to cut the mustard. That's not going to be enough. You need the T-34-85 because that comes with a heavy anti-tank gun. And that is going to be enough for you to be able to keep up. That will be enough for you to actually be able to threaten those big, horrible, nasty German late war vehicles. And the great thing is, if you do end up coming across a Panzer III or a Panzer IV, rather than just keeping up with the Germans, you'll actually have army superiority over them in many cases, especially if it is a Panzer III and it's only got a medium AT gun. So the T-34-85 is a bit of an insurance policy. It lets you take on the big tanks and it also allows you to dominate some of the lighter ones as well. But that covers all of the major allies. Now let's begin wandering into the murky depths of the Axis. And we'll start off with the Germans. And when it comes to picking a single German tank, it's very difficult because a lot of them are really cool. They're a faction that is known for their armor and they all have pretty compelling arguments for them. Even the bigger ones like the Tigers, which a lot of veteran players don't like, but I've taken to tournaments and gone undefeated with them. They can be used very, very effectively. But if I was to pick one and you really twist my arm, it would come down to either the Panzer III or the Panzer IV. Now the Panzer IV is a medium tank and it comes with a heavy anti-tank gun. This is really good because it means that if you're going after those allied tanks such as the Sherman and the Cromwell, you'll actually have an advantage over them because you'll be penning them easier than they'll be penetrating you. And also it means you can keep up in the anti-infantry department because a heavy anti-tank gun does get the same high explosive profile as the special ally medium AT guns of their tanks. So you have only advantages over them. The only small advantage is you're paying very slightly more, but if you're looking at about 200 points for a allied medium tank like a Sherman or Cromwell and then you're looking at about 235 for a Panzer IV it's very much a small investment that's worth paying. The only disadvantage of the Panzer IV and the reason why I think it's going to become the honourable mention and the reason why I will probably suggest the Panzer III as the go-to beginner tank is there are very few variations of it. The Panzer IV has a very early war variant and it has the late war variant and that is it. The Panzer III is a much more flexible vehicle. It starts off with a as a light tank with a light anti-tank gun and it can go all the way up to a medium tank with a medium anti-tank gun and side skirts to make it more protected against piats and other shaped charges and also you can give us a, a light howitzer as well but also be a medium tank. It's just really flexible and what's great about the Panzer III is it can be used in all time periods and there's always there's always a Panzer III that's going to be useful in your list. Most people competitively, which is not something that should be overly concerned for beginners but it's worth mentioning, would say that the best Panzer III variant is the one that allows you to run it as a light tank with medium AT gun because then it only costs you 155 points and you're getting all of the firepower that you need at a discount, uh, discount price. I do get that, but I would also suggest that you don't want to, as Germans, be on the lower end of the armor fight. You want to be winning those armor fights. It's key to victory. It's key to how your army fundamentally wants to operate. So for me, I would say Panzer III, medium with a medium anti-tank gun. But the Panzer IV is also very, very good with that heavy anti-tank gun. But as a tank that you can use as a springboard that you can jump off on, that you can experiment with, a little bit like you can with the Sherman, 
I think the Panzer III is a great tank that's not only beginner friendly, but also very, very varied and very interesting. But the main takeaway here is both are fantastic. There are loads of starter armies that come with both the Panzer III and the Panzer IV, and whichever one you pick up, you're gonna have a really good time with. They're almost equal in terms of their beginner friendliness. I could talk about German tanks in bolt action all day, but I'm gonna tear myself away from them and let's move on to our next Axis power, which is Japan. Now, Japan doesn't have very good tanks. They're not really known for their armor doctrine in World War II. In fact, they were kind of laughed at a little bit, especially in sort of the post-war narrative. There is a lot of, you can say about Japanese tanks, about how they were more designed to be lighter, to move through difficult jungle terrain, but let's not get into that now. Let's focus on the game. Japan tanks aren't necessarily very powerful, but they are incredibly cheap. And this is what you want to be thinking about when you're picking one for your army. You want something that is going to allow you to play the armor game, because there's a big difference between turning up with a bad tank and turning up with no tank at all. It, bolt action is an infantry game, but if you don't have a tank, you are going to feel it hard. The good thing is that the Japanese tanks tend to be quite cheap, so when they die, you don't really care. It's not going to cripple you. If you lose a late war German tank, that might be that might be GG right there. But if you lose a Japanese vehicle, most of the time it's just a little blip on the radar, if that. Now I have one recommended tank and I have one honorable mention. The recommended tank, the beginner friendly one, is the Chi Ha. This plastic kit comes in the starter army. It's also widely available in things like Island Assault. And I think every alt action store or third party store that I've been into has had one of these things on the shelves. They're just a really decent plastic kit, relatively modern as well. So quite, quite easy and pleasurable to build. The good thing about the Chi Ha, the Type 97 Chi Ha, I believe it is, is that you can build it with a howitzer. So you've got a 135 point tank with all the anti infantry firepower. Or you can build it with a medium anti-tank gun, at which point it basically becomes a Panzer III, which is the Chiha Kai Shinto. And I've just spent ages telling you how good the Panzer III was, so I don't need to repeat myself there. So Chiha, very good kit, very good tank, a little bit of variety in there, something that you'll be able to get to grips with, and it will definitely allow you to learn how you want to use your Japanese vehicles. The honorable mention I'm going to give is to the Type 95 Ha Go. Now, this vehicle is an absolute meme. Calling it a tank is hugely disingenuous. Not even Wikipedia calls it a tank. It refers to it as an armoured vehicle. It's not actually a tank technically by bolt action rule, because it's only armour value 7 plus. But it is iconic for the faction, and it is unbelievably cheap. It's 95 points, and you get a light anti-tank gun, and you get two medium machine guns. And at the end of the day, it's still armor seven, so it's immune to small arms fire. It is probably the tank that the Japanese are most famous for in World War II. There's lots of, lots of Japanese players absolutely love this thing because it's just a total meme. It's not overly beginner friendly though, just because it has a bunch of special rules like low velocity and small, what was it, a one man turret and stuff like that. But if you are a Japanese player and you want to get your, I would say, most fun tank, think about the Type 95 Hargo. Now last, but incredibly for once, not least, we have Italy. It's no secret in the bolt action community that the Italians are not considered an overly powerful faction. They've got amazing models, latest kits, really cool, flavorful, but a little bit poo. So you can imagine my surprise, my pleasant surprise, when I was doing my research this video and I was looking at the different vehicles that they get, that their go-to beginner tank is actually pretty good. I recommend the M13-40. This is a tank that you can buy as a plastic kit, which is actually quite rare. A lot of the Italian tanks are in resin, so it's really good for beginners that it's just in plastic. And also it comes in the starter army. So it's something that is you've got incredibly easy access to. If you're gonna get into Italians, you're probably gonna end up picking up this tank one way or another. Now, a lot of people recommend the 
M1340 because not only can it be built as the medium tank, but you can also build it as a Simaventi assault gun. And the Simaventi is cool. It does come with a medium AT gun, which is going to solve a lot of your anti-tank problems as the Italians. They tend to have a little bit weak anti-tank. But I really like the M13-40 because not only is it incredibly cheap at 125 points, it comes with a light AT gun, which is, a, you know, it, it'll do. It's not great, but it'll do. And the big thing is it comes with up to four medium machine guns. It has a double machine gun in the hull, not a single one like everyone else, a double. Then it gets a coax machine gun. And then for 15 points more, you can add another machine gun onto it. So if you just take it as the base model with the three MMGs, that's 125. If you then spend 15 points for the extra gun, it's 140 points for 20 DACA shots. That's actually really, really valuable. That's, re that's exactly what you want out of a tank. Something that can be cheap and it can just side down infantry and you can leave your anti-tank to some of the other parts in your list. So I, I really recommend it. I think it's an easy kit. It's one that you're probably going to get anyway, and it's actually reasonably powerful. The only downside of the M13-40 is it does have a few extra rules you need to be aware of. Things that ideally we would avoid if we were going for a beginner vehicle. It is a slow tank, so it doesn't advance very fast. And it's also vulnerable because it's got riveted construction. But essentially, it is the only is the only real t option you've got for a beginner tank as the Italian. So you kind of just got to be aware of that. But if it is the only tank you've got, then there's less rules for you to learn. Then it's not too bad, I suppose. But yeah, it, it's a good vehicle. It's powerful, easy access. But unfortunately, you are going to have to be aware of it. it does have a couple of those extra special rules, which aren't buffs either. They are they are nerfs, sadly. One thing to mention about the M13-40 is it's very, very cleverly designed. I mean the kit, the kit that Warlord makes. It's very cleverly designed to the point where you can swap out the M13-40 uh, turret and instead you can put the casemate on to turn it into the Simavente. So when you buy that vehicle, you actually get two for one which is a huge plus point for it being a beginner tank because it means it's great bang for buck, it's cheaper, and it means if you don't like one variant, you can always try out the other one. And that, dear viewers, is my recommended beginner tank for every major faction in bolt action. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Is there a vehicle that I mentioned that you think isn't really beginner friendly? Or do you have another one that you think that I should have talked about that is a great starter tank for someone getting into the game? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much
And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, August Vardy and the Tommies. Thank you guys. Your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.